It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Hi, it's your boy, Cat Girl Kazu, newly expert ranked ninja player. For now, my luck's gonna run out any day now. Yeah, make that formerly expert ranked. Yomi Hustle is supposed to be easy to pick up and play, but the systems are complicated at first glance, and I see a lot of players who need help grasping the concepts. Some of this is probably already covered in the official, unofficial Yomi Hustle tutorial, but I've never watched it, because I have ADD, so we're doing this my way. In fact, I'm already having second thoughts about wasting your time with this intro, so I'm gonna cut this short. This is the DI wheel. It is here to save you from pain, humiliation, and death. The way it works is that you need to set it ahead of time so that it affects the next thing that hits you. Uh, just to demonstrate, let's say I get hit by this horizontal slash. See the difference between how I slide on the ground when I DI this way as opposed to this way. It's a huge difference and as the combo multiplier goes up, the DI makes more and more of a difference so that eventually I just, I guess, DI correctly once and get yeeted to Brazil and the combo is over. In fact, this can be the difference between eating a combo and getting away relatively scot-free. Like, uh, something common is for cowboys to use lightning slice to catch a ninja's, uh, round start dash back. If I DI away, then there's no possible way he can get a follow-up off of it. I'm safe. I've taken only this much damage, really not a big deal, uh, and we're back to where we started. He's got some meter, I took some damage, but really, things are mostly fine for me right now. What if I, for some reason, was DIing towards him? Look at that. Suddenly, shit just got really bad for me, and all because of the wrong DI. The rule of thumb is that you want to use DI in such a way that you're going to get flung farther and faster. So, let's say you're a cowboy in this situation. If I use chuck spin, then the right DI would be upwards, because now you're going to fly away from me, and I'm going to have to use a double jump to chase you down and continue the combo. If you DI down, then you're still going to be right here where I can hit you. On the other hand, if I were to use kick, then down would be more helpful, because as you can see, it spikes you into the ground faster, making it so that it's harder for me to follow you. Whereas up would uh, not be useful and would actually be beneficial to me. Now obviously experience and specific game knowledge play a big part in knowing how to DI against what, so it's just something you're going to have to learn as you go. The important thing for now is that you should never, ever not set your DI to something. If you DI badly on purpose, 9 times out of 10, it still won't be any worse than not DIing at all. Alright, this is the big one. Using the prediction system is, zero exaggeration, the entire point of the game. If you have no idea how it works, this is a really good and straight to the point breakdown. I'll also paste the link in the description. Go check it out. The cowboy in the intro got hit because he made a mistake that shows that he doesn't quite understand the prediction system. After hitting this lightning slice, he teleports over and uses lasso, thinking that he's seen the prediction show robot bouncing off the wall and into the lasso. The problem is that what's actually going to happen is Robot becoming ready to move before the lasso hits him. You could have seen this. <laughs> uh, in fact, you could have seen this in great detail. You wouldn't, because you know how much time Robot is going to have here in order to do something like this. Alright, here's a less obvious example of a badly thought out attack. If I'm Ninja right now, and I click Nunchuck, I'll start to see a future in which Cowboy gets hit by the nunchuck, and I'll get to act again 
while the opponent uh, is still in hit stun for 23 frames. Cool, right? But what happens if Cowboy walks backwards? Well, now Cowboy is going to be ready while I'm still stuck in the nunchuck animation for 10 frames. There are a bunch of other ways that using nunchuck right now could go badly for me, and they're all very bad, and they're all actually quite likely. So this might not be worth the risk. Whiff cancelling for no reason is another newbie dead giveaway. I don't know if these new players are scared of being punished just because their opponent is able to take an action and they aren't. Or if they only see one button and figure that means they should press it. Either way, it's important to learn <laughs> what whiff cancel can and can't do for you. So let's say I'm at close range with my opponent and I use dodge and he uses pommel. Oh no. All I can do is whiff cancel, whereas he can do all this. Scary, I should whiff cancel. But wait. Let's back up a little. Look how little frame advantage that is. You can even tell now by how soon it is, by how little time there is before I'm ready again. In fact, if I were to click horizontal slash right now, I would see that I'm going to have six frames left before it hits me. It's long enough to just get out of there, you know? Also, note that there are times when you shouldn't whiff cancel because there's no way the whiff cancel is going to save you. Watch. Cowboy whiffs an attack, finds himself about to be punished, and uses whiff cancel, only to find that absolutely nothing he can do will save him. Would have been better off just taking that hit and then bursting out of the combo. Now you're about... This is about to really, really hurt for Cowboy. All because he chose to use up his burst sprint for no reason. You know, ouch. Alright, we've saved the best for last. This one is probably the least intuitive mechanic in Yomi Hustle, because it doesn't have an equivalent in any game that I know of. Fucking really? Anyway... One of the most common new player questions is, what's a free cancel? Okay, so we're back at the scenario where Ninja's using Nunchuck and Cowboy's walking backwards. Ninja is still stuck in the Nunchuck animation for 10 frames after Cowboy's uh, walk animation ends. And normally Ninja would have to whiff cancel here. But if we had turned on free cancel, as you can see, didn't need to use my burst meter, uh, just this just happened automatically, and I can do all the things that I would normally uh, be able to do after a nunchuck instead of only the things that I'm allowed to do after a whiff cancel. This is really good because it lets me do things like, say, use drop kick and free cancel it. See, drop kick will hit horizontal slash or lightning slice or, you know, a number of other things, but if he uses walk back, well, that's really bad news for me. So I'll free cancel it, and if he does something that gets beat clean, that just loses outright to drop kick, well then I get, I, I win, I got the hit. And if he does something, uh, certain things where I would whiff and need to whiff cancel, then instead I, uh, I'm, I'm free to do my normal actions instead. One of the best uses of free cancel is to intentionally activate it as an offensive weapon. Basically, using a free canceled move that's just barely too slow to hit gives you a situation that I like to call a free cancel setup. It's the Yomi Hustle equivalent of a fighting game mix-up. Okay, so here we have a situation where Ninja has some time to make use of while Cowboy is standing up off the ground. Let's use Nunchuck. Frame advantage minus one means Cowboy is going to have just one frame to do something with before getting hit by this nunchuck. With only one frame, the only option is block. Nothing else is going to save him. So, if we free cancel this nunchuck, 
Now look, I have the option to hold and finish this nunchuck attack. Again, this is all he can do. No other defensive option will save him if I decide to finish this nunchuck attack. So I can finish it and risk getting parried and punished. Or I can try to predict that, you know, he is going to or block and hit him with something like this. And, and of course, if he, uh, if he knows that I'm going to do that, then he would want to use Pommel, for example. Knowing how to use this and fight against it will be a huge level up to your game. Alright, that's it. This is where I should say a bunch of wrap-up shit, but I don't know. I'm already kind of worried that the people who need this video will have trouble understanding, and that the people who understand are the ones who don't really need it. I love this game, and I really want to help people get into it. So if you're someone who needed this video, please leave feedback in the comments, especially if you still have questions. I'll totally come down there and answer, or even make a quick video about it if it's a really good question. So yeah, like, comment, subscribe, and buy me a coffee, because for all I know, I'm about to have my door kicked in for illegally using the McDonald's and Best Buy logos. Good night, good luck, and happy hustling. Okay, that was actually perfect. <laughs> oh, I hope that came out.